Welcome back to my Next.js series. In the first video, we briefly mentioned routing and pages. In this video, we're going to talk in depth about routing, pages, layouts, and templates. You already know from the previous tutorial that routes are created using folders, and they're not publicly accessible until a page.jsx file is available in that folder. If I, for example, create a new books route without a page.jsx file and attempt to access it, I'll get a 404 page not found error. If I, however, create a page.jsx file which exports a React component, in this case just a headline saying books, my route will immediately be accessible and start working. You might want to group routes in folders without affecting the URL structure, to have a more organized code base, or to use a layout for a group of pages without affecting the URL structure. Next.js offers route groups for such cases. If I create a new folder and enclose its name in parentheses and I nest the books folder inside of it, the URL structure of my books route is unaffected and the library folder is actually just a route group, which does not affect the URL. Not all routes are static and known ahead of time. My application might require dynamic routes to retrieve books by ID. You can use the Next.js dynamic routes feature for this. If I create a new route in my books folder and I enclose its name with square brackets and call the segment book ID, this route will now work for all subsequent segments of books and the book ID will be passed as a parameter to all specialty files under books. This means page, layout, template, head and others. Let me make the page.jsx file now. My page.jsx file will just have a headline saying individual book and then it will output book ID. As you can see, params is a prop and book ID is the segment name that we passed. If I refresh now and enter a segment after books, for example, one, I get my individual book view and I get my book ID rendered. This will work for any segment. You can use these dynamic routes to fetch data from the database and pre-render a dynamic page. Now, this dynamic segment will catch only the immediate next segment after books. If I, for example, open books 2, 3, this route does not exist. We do have dynamic catch all routes, which are made using ellipses in front of the parameter name. Now, this is a catch all route and it will work for all subsequent segments after books. And as you can see, all of the parameters are passed in the book ID prop. It is actually an array. Right now, the books route itself is separate with its own page.jsx file. And this is frequently the scenario that you have to implement. You can, however, use the same layout you use for the dynamic routes for the root books route as well. The only thing you have to do is change this catch all route to be an optional catch all route. This happens with double square brackets and by deleting the page.jsx file of books. Now, if I save, you can see that my individual books view works for the books route as well as all subsequent detail routes. These routing capabilities are quite simple and elegant and they cover most scenarios that you need to implement in a modern web app. Let's now talk about layouts. Layouts are simply components that wrap the UI of all subsequent routes. Layouts are created with a layout.jsx file which should export a React component. A layout component should always wrap the children prop because in this case children is the UI of all subsequent routes. In my test application, I already have a root layout. It defines the basic HTML head and body tags. I can also add a secondary layout for my books route by creating a layout.jsx file. In this case, let's say that this books layout will just render some navigation. And as you can see, I also render the children, which in this case would be this page UI. As you can see, my layout renders the navigation correctly and then the subsequent user interface from my dynamic route page.jsx file. One important thing about layouts is that they do not re-render on navigation and they preserve their state throughout routes. 
this is actually something you might not want if something in the layout is expected to change on navigation. For this case, Next.js has the concept of templates. A template is like a layout with two major differences. The first difference is that a template is nested inside the layout for the same route. In this case, I'll create my books template next to my layout and it will contain just a simple headline saying that this is the template and then it will render the children. As you can see, I get my layout, then inside of it is the template and then inside the template, the children is the page.jsx file of my dynamic route. The second major difference between a layout and a template is that a template will always re-render on navigation, it will not preserve its state and it would run any side effects when you navigate, which sometimes is the desired behavior if UI elements in the template need to change on navigation. With this, we'll wrap today's video. We talk about routing, pages, layouts, and templates. Together with head, these are the most fundamental specialty files in Next. You use them to build most of your application. This structure is quite simple and intuitive in my opinion, but it's also very powerful. You see just how powerful when we explore more advanced features like data fetching and hybrid rendering. Don't forget to subscribe to get notified when the next video in the series is released. Take care.